Beth, I meant to pray for you when I pr prayed for everyone else because you're traveling back to Ohio tonight. So God bless you. Thank you for being here anytime. We're your family, you know. I only have five words to uh, speak from this day. For such a time as this. <laughs> Father, I pray this morning that you help me. Help me to give the message you've given to me for all of us. You are our Father, God, and you are here with us for such a time as this. Hallow these minutes, these moments. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. It's not important in the long run how much we give to the church. It's not important in the long run how often you are in church. It is not important how, how much you like the pastor. It's not so important of the jobs that you do in the church. And it really, really doesn't matter how old you are. You see, we're here this morning, I believe, because God called us here. You remember how many we had last week? God called you here. Now it's your regular Sunday morning um, pleasure. And that's what we like. We'd love to see you. But I want you to understand a concept that you are here this morning. Because it's a time when God has something for you to hear. I don't know what that is. We could go many different places this morning. The twins game. Or, you know, we could work in our yard with the rain, with the rain. But just get this concept. Some of you here this morning, some of you are here not because it's Sunday morning, but because God brought you here. And he wants you to hear what he says to you. Now that's a pretty heavy responsibility on me. Believe. You need to hear believe today. Believe. Trust. Rely. You need to hear. You need to hear. Put your faith wholly in Jesus. There may be something else that is said during the, the message. But God brought you here. Maybe it be only one person here. But you might be that person that God wants to bring his message right to your heart. O oh Lord God, our Lord God is in his holy temple. Quiet, everyone.
He's here. And he wants to speak to you. Well, for such a time as this, anyway. For such a time as how long I preach, God has brought us here together. The writer of Hebrews could really sum it up in this way. So do not throw away your confidence in God. It will be richly rewarded. You need to per persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a very little while, he who is coming will come. And my righteous one will live by faith. God is telling us, don't be like the Israelites of old. Or maybe people that we even know who fell away from their faith. But rather, believe. Believe God. Right now to you. I like the little chorus. Faith, mighty faith, the promises. And looks to God above. Laughs at impossibilities and cries, it shall be done. So let us not be in unbelief, but let us just wait and see what God would, what would say to me and you. Robert and Mary Moffat were missionaries for 10 years in Asia. In those 10 years that they were missionaries, they did not have one person come to Christ. How would you like to be a Sunday school teacher or a pastor that did not have anyone come to Christ or that you've helped anyone find the Lord in 10 years? But for them, 10 years, not one convert, husband and wife together. And one of their supporters back home in America wrote a letter to them and, and they said, can I send you anything to you and to Robert there in your field? Now remind, remind you, not one convert. And so Mary Moffat sent back this word. She said, yes, send us a communion set. It will be needed shortly. A small group of believers were called together by the Holy Spirit, by God, as they found Christ. And six people, six, celebrated in a circle the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's faith. Send us a communion set. That's faith. You need a prayer answered today. You're here. Maybe God brought you here just to hear that part. Have faith in God. Believe. Everything is impossible. It's, everything is dark. But wait a minute. Right now, in this church, at this address, at this moment, maybe you will hear for the first time, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. My mother went to church all her life. Well, nearly so. But it wasn't until several years before she passed away that she finally realized what that verse meant, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. She'd gone to church and done all of what was expected of her. A rabbi in the third century noted that Moses gave to us in the, read, in the writing of the scripture 365 thou shalt nots and 248 thou shalt. Well, David renew, re, reduced all of that to 11 in Psalm 15. It was Isaiah that reduced all of those 365 thou shalt nots to six. In Isaiah chapter 33, it was Micah who reduced all of that to three. And it was Habakkuk that reduced it, all of them to one. 
Believe and the just will live by faith. That's it. Unbelief short circuits faith. We know that. But unbelief today is not just some kind of a common weakness that most of us have. You know, I just can't, can't get my eyes on or my thoughts on concept of God. Unbelief is not that. Unbelief is not just a lack of understanding the Bible. That's not unbelief. Unbelief is not a weakness that we might have in not being able to discern words of the scripture. Write it down in in your book. Unbelief is refusing to believe. That's unbelief. Refusing to believe. You've heard a hundred times the just will live by faith. But until we come to accept that, we're going to wander around in these 365 thou shalt nots and we'll be confused. God's given it to us this morning. The just will live by faith. You cannot say, I can't believe that. What you have to say, to be honest with yourself, I won't believe it. Get the difference? I can't. (laughs) No, I just simply will not believe it. Well, Satan knows that believers live by faith. And faith is not just the mental ascent. ascent. It's drawing near to God and it's believing. And yes, Lord, I will pray. Yes, I read your scripture. Yes, we have fellowship. Yes, we're running the race that God set before us. Well, let me see if I can give you three little gems to put in your hand or put in your heart. The first one would be be something like this. We know that our faith this morning embraces God's promises. We know that we embrace his promise. We know we need spiritual strength, but it's his holy word. It's his word to us. And when you hear the word, you're going to either say, I will believe it, or I will not. I will believe it or not. The Bible tells us in Romans 8, therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Do we believe that? The Bible says, for what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by sinful nature, God did by sending his son. Do we believe that? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. You've heard that a hundred times or more. But will you accept it? Will you believe it? Someone here needs to hear that. It's not being able, it's not that God wants you to explain it. Will you believe what God says? There was a man who often failed the Lord. He was depending on his own strength. And that man was the Apostle Peter, who tells us the secret that God has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them we may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption that is in the world. So, first of all, as you are here, we need to embrace the promise of God. I can't explain some of them, but I can embrace it. Secondly, our faith recalls God's faithfulness. You yourselves have seen everything, Joshua tells us, that the Lord your God has done to all these nations for your sake. It was the Lord your God who fought for you. Our daily routine, our whatever we do every single day, I will make place for God. I will make a time to talk with him. And to look ahead today, we recall God's faithfulness yesterday. 
James tells us, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. We take it for granted. But problems eclipse our thanksgiving to God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. That's the root. That's the root. His promises, his faithfulness. Some of you have not thought about that. Have you ever said, oh God, help me just this once. Help me do this and I will live for you the rest of my life. Did any of you ever say something like that? No, huh? there must just be people in Wisconsin. I remember my first sermon that I preached. It was in my home church. I was uh, 18. Tragedy, or no, not the tragedy, but the, the thing that gave me the worst fear was my mother was sitting right there. And she said to me, she said, good night, Tom. We taught you everything you know. What are you going to teach us? <laughs> that really, that really gives us a, gave me a positive jolt. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God sacrifices of praise. I hung on to the promise of God that he wasn't going to leave me behind the pulpit without him. And I believe that he was faithful, that he would see me through that sermon. Probably the shortest one I ever preached. Now, don't say amen, because... Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. This is how we sound to God. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. For such a time as this, Fifty-six years ago, I was seated in the front row of the little, little church I grew up in. Fifty-six years ago, God met me at that chair in our little church. And God not only gave me the conviction and assurance that God forgave all my sins, no matter what I did to my brothers. God forgave it all. But he also called me into ministry. So embrace the promises of God. Begin with John 3.16. Believe God's faithfulness to you by faith. I remember reading the illustration of, G. Cam or of um, Spurgeon. They were bu building his tabernacle in London. It would seat 10,000 people, a few more than this. But he was standing in the pulpit and workers were all around, three stories high, where people would be seated. And he wondered how the acoustics were. They didn't have these things then, but just his natural voice. And he, 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 he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And one of the workers up on the third area came down to him and said, I trust Christ. Pray for me. He came to know the Lord just by Spurgeon's quoting a verse of Scripture. There are verses of Scripture that you may have heard this morning. Here's a few more. But maybe this verse of Scripture will take away that hurt. It'll take away that doubt. It will be God's word of assurance to you. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. 
This is what the ancients were commended for. Without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. Cast all your cares on the Lord, for he will sustain you. He will never let you fall. Trust in him at all times, my people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Today, God brought you here. Don't know who you might be, that you would hear one of these promises. He he wants to meet you. Do you hear him? Faith in God caused Moses to leave Egypt because he saw the one who was invisible. Faith deals primarily with today and tomorrow. The Apostle Paul said, so fix your eyes not on what is seen, but on what is not seen. For what is is seen is temporary, but what is seen is eternal. How can I uh, explain this? Ah, got the illustration that I wanted. Right here. I want to get down closer. Am I on? No. No. I'm not on, Gene? Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, and you're not alive. (laughs) Now can you hear me? A little better? We can hear you, but not the mic. Okay. This is an illustration how God can speak to you today. Okay? Listen. Faith can be likened to a transistor radio. Now, I have my man that knows transistor radios, Gene. He'll he'll tell me if I'm right or wrong. When you turn the radio on, what comes out? Music. Let's just say yes. Music. Are there any trumpets or guitars inside the radio box? No. Not a one. Of course not. Yet the room can be filled with the sound of music, right? Am I doing a good job of explaining here? (laughs) I'm about to be in my knowledge, but the human senses can't detect them all, but the radio can pick them up. The music is not actually in the radio at all. The music is coming through the radio from a greater unseen source. Am I right? Amen. So it is with faith. Faith does not originate within us. It doesn't. It comes from God. As we listen, as we hear His Word, that comes to us and to our ears and it comes alive by the Holy Spirit. A person filled with faith has an entirely different view of things from the person who is living on purely physical senses. Amen. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. I've been there, my friend. I've been there trying to think, why does this radio work? 
But then when I tried to put it together, I couldn't. Until I just absolutely took by faith what somebody said. It's not in the radio talk. God comes to you. And he comes within you. As a pastor, and a pastor that has a loving heart for you people, my prayer is that God will convince you that he said, I will never, 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 never leave you or forsake you. Some of